I'm a native New Yorker. It was the natural place for me to come back to. So I took a loft on 33rd Madison in 1979. Put a wall up in the middle, and I lived on one side, and I had my living space on the other side. And it was very primitive, but uh, it worked very well for my first seven years. I really had this very romantic, naive fantasy that if I could learn to build guitars, uh, that I could get out of the rat race and have my cabin in the woods, and musicians would beat a path to my door. I quickly realized that uh, that wasn't the case. So I took a gig uh, taking over the repair department of a large music store outside of Philly and mastered uh, the repair side of the equation. And the next step after that was moving back to New York and starting my own shop. For the last 35 years, I've primarily been building electric solid body guitars and electric bass guitars. Acoustic guitars was my initial passion and what got me into this uh, in the first place. But when my son was born, I didn't want an excuse for spending more time at the shop. So I just put it on the back burner for over 20 years. My son graduated college a few months ago and now it's time to build acoustics again. The more resonant they are acoustically, the better they're going to sound amplified. I was a pioneer in many ways of trying to make electric instruments that were lighter in weight and more acoustically resonant. Some of my employees go to uh, guitar making schools. Uh, and that kind of background is great, but it's not essential. I, I found the most important indicator for me of whether someone's going to work out or not is just how passionate they are about guitars. We select the appropriate wood for the instruments and then the bodies are, are cut out and then we route the bodies for, for the pickups and, and all the other cavities in the body. Same with the necks, they get, uh, before they're finished sanded, we have to true the fingerboard, which is the playing surface, which is a very precise, critical, hands-on operation. So after the fingerboard is true, then we install the frets, and then the frets are filed, the edges are filed, the tops are leveled, the fingerboard is scraped, uh, and then that goes into final sanding. And then we apply the logo to the headstock, the serial number to the back of the headstock, and then the neck goes in a spray. So then once a neck and a body are finished, we then spray the control cavities and the pickup routes with this conductive paint, which uh, helps keep the electronics quiet. Then it goes to one of my builders who complete the entire instrument from that point to the end. And then we uh, lay out the bridge location, we mount the bridge, uh, we install the electronics, we wire up the instrument. The neck is installed and, and we have to fabricate a part called the nut and it, you have to file grooves to hold each string. It's a very precise process. Uh, installing the tuning machine, stringing it up, and then adjusting the action, the intonation, and doing a fun check. That's basically the build process. The feedback is what makes it all worthwhile. Uh, when I get an email or a phone call a week after we've delivered an instrument, uh, that, that's the gravy. I think what stands out is that we're not interested in high volume, we're not interested in shipping units and shipping containers. Uh, it's a labor of love.